airborne target identified. Hey folks. For this video, I'm going to be taking a look at what role ESF secondary weapons play and how they should be balanced around that role. In general, ESF secondary weapons should do two things for the player. One, they should augment one particular style of play while still allowing you to remain flexible and adapt to different situations. The other thing they need to do is be fun to use. Even if a weapon is, in theory, very well balanced gameplay-wise, if it's not enjoyable for a player to use, it's still a poorly designed weapon. So, to start out, an example of a well-balanced secondary weapon right now would be rocket pods. They augment a player's ability to kill infantry and armor, while giving some benefits against aircraft in limited situations. They're also quite fun to use and very rewarding to master. On the flip side, they don't do obscene damage to either infantry or armor. They require a certain degree of skill to be used well, and they leave the player at a distinct disadvantage against other ESFs or when trying to escape an area due to the lack of afterburners. In the middle of the balance discussion are air-to-air -air missiles, which have spent most of the last year jumping indecisively back and forth over the line of well-balanced and fun to use. To begin with, they were actually fairly well-balanced gameplay-wise. They did decent damage, were relatively easy to use, and relatively hard to counter without flares. However, they force the player into a purely air-to-air -air role since they have no air-to-ground capabilities. Beyond that, they weren't particularly rewarding or fun to use, and due to these two factors, they were rarely pulled and received a generally negative reputation. Then, they were buffed to compensate for the seemingly lackluster performance. With this buff, only one thing changed, but that change really snowballed. Their effectiveness against air was increased rather significantly. They became nigh on impossible to avoid and gained a lot of notoriety due to that fact. At this point, while they were still rather boring to use and still pigeonholed the player into an anti-air role, they essentially became fun to use through their effectiveness and therefore players started using them in large numbers. Not much actually changed about their damage or ease of use, but that small change snowballed and became the massive problem that most of you are familiar with. Now, they've been nerfed again, and they're once again fairly well balanced in terms of basic power. However, since they're not overwhelmingly good against aircraft, their lack of ability to engage anything else has once again essentially pushed them inside in favor of other options that are more able to fill a variety of roles. Now, let's move on to the new secondary weapons. At the moment, neither of these are particularly well balanced in terms of power, however they are both fun to use. At the moment, coyotes are too strong, and hornets really have the same problem that air-to-air -air missiles had, in that they pigeonhole while not being strong enough at that one role to really justify their usage. So let's look at coyotes first. They are incredibly effective against air at close to mid-range while also being incredibly effective against infantry to the point where they're actually better than rocket pods at it. So, by choosing coyotes, you will essentially get the most powerful anti-air secondary and the most powerful anti-infantry secondary in one option. It's very poorly balanced and needs a couple of changes, which I will discuss later. Now, on the opposite end, we have hornets. They are quite good against armor. They don't have quite the raw damage output of rocket pods, However, their ability to be guided increases their effective range by a large margin and does make them a viable option for anti-armor. However, they're all but worthless against aircraft and infantry, which means that players aren't going to choose them because attacking tanks as ESFs are hard enough, and if you're giving up your infantry and air killing abilities for it, it's just not worth it when you have rocket pods that aren't as much of a sacrifice. So, now we're into the fun part where I get to suggest changes and you get to tell me how horrible they are. Or how good they are, hopefully. So, the first general change that I would like to make is that the way weapons reload currently on an ESF is that if you fire your primary weapon, run it out of ammo, you can switch to your secondary weapon, start firing it, and your primary will continue to reload while you're using the secondary, which means usually by the time you've emptied your secondary weapon, you switch back and you've got a full clip ready to go. This is a little bit of a problem due to the fact that it encourages players to simply spam one weapon, switch to the other, spam that weapon, switch back. There's no downtime in between firing and no real decision about whether you should be firing or using what weapon at a time. So the change I would like to see made 
is to either not allow the ESF to reload a weapon that's not currently in use, or the other option is to make the reload time significantly longer on a weapon that is not currently in use. Personally, I think the second option would be a little bit better of one. I don't have a problem per se with reloading a weapon while you're using another one, but at the moment, the reload time on weapons versus the time to empty a clip basically means that you don't have to worry about the reload time on a weapon if you have a secondary because it'll be fully reloaded by the time you're done firing off that secondary weapon. So let's talk coyote missiles. At the moment, the largest problem with them is their effectiveness against infantry. They do large amounts of splash damage and they have a very high rate of fire. Combined, these two attributes make them better at killing infantry than rocket pods, which are supposed to be the primary anti-infantry secondaries. The solution is pretty simple, you just need to reduce their splash damage. I'm perfectly fine with them affecting infantry, but there's no reason that they should be melting them like they are in their current state. Rocket pods need to be the primary anti-infantry secondary, and other ones need to be useful, but nowhere near their effectiveness. At the moment, they also feel a little bit powerful against aircraft, but my theory on that is that a lot of the reason is due to the fact that so many people are using them right now due to their effectiveness against infantry, and another reason could be that people haven't really learned how to counter them yet. Until a little bit more time goes by, the only change I'd like to see made to them in terms of air-to-air -air power is to increase their reload time by about a second or two. Right now, especially at fully sorted, they reload very quickly and you can really just fill the air in front of you with a constant rain of coyotes, which forces your opponent to either focus purely on dodging or try to do damage and take a swarm of missiles to the face. A longer reload time would help alleviate this problem but other than that minor change in their air-to-air -air abilities, I think they're pretty neat little weapons, and I'd like to give them a little bit of time for the dust to settle and see how people start adjusting to them. So, the final secondary I'm going to talk about are the new Hornet missiles. At the moment, they feel a bit lackluster all around, since they're mainly dedicated for anti-armor, but they don't really do that job much better than rocket pods, and they also give up the majority of the anti-air and anti-infantry capabilities that rocket pods have. Now, Hornets feel like they're going to be a little bit tricky to balance. Players need an incentive to use them over an other option, but any further buffs to their anti-armor capabilities would likely cross them over the line into the realm of overpowered. Buffing them against infantry is inherently difficult due to their guided nature and the way you have to fly while you're using them, so I'm going to throw that out the window too. That only leaves us with the ability to buff them against air. Now, the way I see to do this, and it pains me to say this, but the only real way I see to have this happen is to give them the ability to acquire a soft lock on aircraft. The lock would function identically to the current air-to-air -air missiles, in that a lock would have to be acquired and then maintained for the entire flight of the missile for it to hit. However, there's no reason to make them as good at air-to-air -air as the dedicated air-to-air -air missiles, so the goal is to just allow players a little bit of flexibility when they pull them. With that in mind, I would be pretty alright with a full clip of Hornet missiles doing similar to a little bit less damage than one air-to-air -air missile does. What this will do is allow players to pull a primarily anti-armor loadout, while still leaving them a little bit of wiggle room to fight aircraft. However, this role also won't impede on the role of dedicated anti-aircraft builds. Alright, so that's about all I've got to say on this topic for now. Hopefully you found this video interesting or informative. If you did, feel free to like or subscribe to the channel. And until then, see you on Araxis.